since we were here last week. As we know, the bombardment and destruction of Gaza has continued unabated. And unfortunately, we are seeing no let up from the Israeli army. We are seeing no reduction in the number of deaths of children, women and men in Gaza. We are one world facing multiple issues, a polycrisis, and we, we need one another. So there is hope in all of us being here today. And so we call for a ceasefire in Gaza now. And with Jesus, we say no more of this. It is a time for a different path to be taken, one which leads to the hope of life rather than the ever spiraling violence of more death. I think for me the importance of tonight's vigil is to send a very strong message that it is time for a ceasefire and a time for an end to the killing of civilians in Gaza. Uh, I think there's been too much death on both sides of this war in recent months and it's now time to find ways that lead to peace rather than keep perpetuating violence. There are people around us today who claim to be powerful, who claim to be the leaders of our country, who claim to lead nations, who are enablers of not just violence and awful atrocities against humanity, but they supply arms, weapons and intelligence to enable perpetrators to perpetrate such heinous crime against ordinary people. Most important message for today is to say Christians, Muslims and the Jews should be honest about their true belief and what it is that their prophets or the prophets of these three religions would do if they're here today and together. All of them would not tolerate this nonsense and they must and we must demand for an end to all hostilities right now i'm here as a, a buddhist i'm not here as re representing my community i'm just here as an individual who really feels overwhelmed by all that i've heard today and all that i've seen on the news i just believe that hatred doesn't cease with hatred it only ceases with love. And I know that, that it sounds a bit feeble <laughs> in the face of what's going on, but I do think love is stronger than hatred. This morning, my husband called to inform me that 18 members of his family were killed last night. In the first few weeks of the aggression, his family had lost 35. So this is an additional 18 members. His cousin, her husband, her children, and her husband's family were killed as they slept last night in Khan Yunis, leaving behind one six-year-old girl. Last night we found out that uh, members of my husband's family had been killed. So it was important for me to stand here today to talk to their story uh, so that you know it felt like it wasn't in vain. And then secondly, to bring together various parts of uh, different communities to be able to stand together, to grieve and to start to heal together. And to send a very strong message about unity and love and community and the power that that holds. As a Jewish person, I do really believe it is important that to come, you know, show my solidarity with Palestinians, show my solidarity with the cause. And also, you know, tonight was a multi-faith space and I really, really wanted to hear what all of the different kind of faith leaders uh, that were speaking tonight said. And I just thought it was a really lovely show of solidarity um, between all of us, Abrahamic faiths, non-Abrahamic faiths, and people of no faith at all. So I came here to put up solidarity, obviously, with the medical workers that are helping Palestine. And I think it's very important, especially because, you know, we're here in front of the Downing Street. It demonstrates yet again and again that this country doesn't have enough money to help out NHS, but it has enough money to support the bombing of medical and hospitals in Palestine. We had 500 hospital admissions to our hospital last night. Now only one doctor is left in the emergency department to look after 500 patients. Um, our message was very clear. It was that we are here as humanity of all faiths, all creeds, all ethnicities, all colors. Uh, with one message, which is that enough is enough. What has happened and what is happening in this very minute in Gaza is unacceptable. It is unacceptable to see, hu to see children, women and men being exterminated live on TV whilst our leaders watch and do not act, whilst 
the silent majority watch on TV and do not act. Of the 36 hospitals in Gaza, only two were left functioning. My colleagues, both British and Palestinians, are working under terrible circumstances. You know how many of them have died. Some of them were taken to prison to be questioned. Some of them disappeared. We don't know whether they're dead or alive. Vigil itself is very important because it's a space and a time where all of us can remember our colleagues who have died, who have given up their lives. But tonight, this particular vigil is even more important because it brings together people of different faiths to remind us that we are all one family and we all are here to support each other and to stand for justice.